Hi, this is Remembering the Past, the show where we talk about people who've died recently have had a profound effect on our history, our society, or our culture. And in our ongoing series on Nobel Prize winners tonight, we're going to talk about Dr. George Ola, who died recently at the age of 89. Dr. Ola was an organic chemist who won the 1994 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work on carbocations. Inorganic chemistry deals primarily with non-carbon atoms that come together as ions, that is, charged particles, to form compounds. Organic chemistry deals primarily with carbon and hydrogen, and hydrocarbon compounds were thought not to be ionic until Dr. Ola discovered carbocations, that is, they could form charged particles under certain conditions, especially with the use of extremely strong acids. Here he explains what his work was all about. I am a chemist who is uh, mostly interested with compounds of the element carbon, which is a fairly central element on Earth. Now, table salt, say sodium chloride, uh, is composed of a sodium cation, a positive ion, and a chloride anion. But carbon compounds uh, are supposed to be different, and their ability to form ionic compounds was doubted for a long while. Uh, I was studying reactions which involved uh, chemistry, which could have involved uh, ionic carbon compounds. Nobody really knew, it was suspected. And for long years I had an interest to pursue this chemistry, but also with an eye to try to find out how this really goes. Now, it's not a question of intuition overnight that you wake up and you have a tremendous idea. Some people may have it, it wasn't with me. But through a fairly long struggle, eventually I was lucky to find systems in which these long, elusive, uh, positive ions of carbons, which they call carbocations, carbon is the element and cation is uh, positive ions, were observable, and uh, as uh, the Nobel Committee stated, I gave supposedly long life to this design. But in order to do this, it was necessary to use very acidic system, which now are called superacids. And when I said very acidic, say your car battery has sulfuric acid in it. And when I grew up, maybe even now in most schools, School children are taught that uh, sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Now the acid in which my chemistry was possible has acidities which are, say, a trillion times stronger than sulfuric acid. Dr. Ola's family story is very interesting. He was born in Budapest before World War II, so he experienced Hungary under the Nazis, and then he was educated under the Soviet system after World War II. His family fled Hungary right after the Soviets crushed the October Uprising in 1956. He came first to Canada, then to Cleveland. There's a large Hungarian post-war community in Cleveland. He spent 12 years at Case Western Reserve as a professor of chemistry. Finally settled at the University of Southern California, where he did most of his work in the United States. And here he talks about his youth. Well, I was born and grew up and lived in Hungary till I was 29. I was born in the regular middle-class family. My father was a lawyer and my mother was a homemaker. To my best knowledge, nobody in my family ever had any interest in science. I was uh, fortunate enough that I got a fairly good uh, schooling education. Uh, much was said about the schools of Budapest and the number of people came out, not only in the sciences, but in other areas musician, conductors, and so on. There was a, a wonderful music school in, in Budapest founded by Franz Liszt, but there was a number of these this gymnasia combined middle and high schools. So I have gone to one of them, not to the one where, where all my well-known physicist compatriots has gone, but this was run by a Catholic order called uh, the Pirate Brothers. And it was really geared to a general education, heavily in the humanities and so on. Now, I never heard the name ever mentioned, and I'm quite sure about it, during my eight years in the school of George Hevesy, who was a student of the same school and who won the Nobel Prize in chemistry, I guess, in 1944 or 45. So 
maybe there was some tradition, but uh, if it was, it was hidden. But I guess it served me very well that uh, it was a very well-balanced general education. Uh, I'm sorry to say I can't remember my chemistry teacher's name, but I remember my physics teacher, who was, whose name was Övegesh, Joseph Övegesh, who was a very inspiring teacher. And later I understand he became well known because he became a university professor and introduced on television popular science in Hungary. But he certainly had a, a substantial influence as, as, as young boys. When I was growing up and going to, to school, I must confess I had absolutely no interest in science. As a matter of fact, it never crossed my mind that science would be an area I would be involved. I had much interest in history, literature, languages, even philosophy. But at the end of World War II, in a war devastated Hungary in Central Europe, when it had come to enter university, it certainly became clear to me that I better try to get into a profession where you also can make a living. Uh, when I took my first chemistry class, I fell in love with chemistry. And don't ask me why, because I can't explain why you are falling in love, but I'm still in love with it. So it may be disappointing, but I was not one of these wonderkinds who at age 10 already knew exactly what one to do and, and studied studiously for this. As I said, he ultimately ended up in Southern California and he discovered carbocations. And here he talks about the importance of that work that won him the Nobel Prize. The carbon can attach itself simultaneously to not more than a maximum of four other atoms or groups. Now, in studying these positively charged uh, species of carbon, uh, we realize through a series of, of investigation that with these systems, carbon can attach five uh, atoms or groups, sometimes six, and recently we showed even seven. Now, this doesn't violate the fundamental rule of what uh, chemists call the octet rule. So you can't have more than eight electrons surrounding carbon at any time. But on the other hand, if I mention the simplest uh, carbon-hydrogen compound, hydrocarbon is methane, CH4. With our uh, very strong acids, we can attach a proton to methane, and CH5 plus is not a fictional species anymore. It's a, it's a very realistic and quite intriguing species, which has substantial bearing and fundamental chemistry in general, but in a practical way. This chemistry opened up possibilities to activate and react hydrocarbons to natural gas and oil are really just mixtures of hydrocarbons. And the chemistry we developed and are still developing allows to take, say, methane or natural gas and transform it into all kinds of useful products to this new type of chemistry. Here he talks about what it felt like to get the Nobel Prize. The time difference, this was early in the morning, we are early riders, so we were up and having breakfast. You get this proverbial phone call. Obviously, uh, it takes a while to sink in. You are obviously gratified and elated. Uh, you really don't know what this all means. And then all hell broke loose. So then we had this wonderful week in Stockholm where we were floating on adrenaline. So it takes a while that it settles in. It's a wonderful, gratifying thing. On the other hand, uh, you should keep your proportion. The fact that you get a prize really isn't making you overnight some type of a different person. You know, obviously anybody who, who receives these prizes uh, will tell you that it has an effect. Look, one thing is, I wouldn't be sitting here interviewed by you if I wouldn't have received the Nobel Prize. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, I was uh, quite well established in my thought that it basically, as I am still a working scientist and I still love to do this. And I'm also blessed with a wonderful wife who keeps me very down to earth.
So I haven't changed, I hope, as an individual. And I work harder than ever because with the Nobel Prize are coming new responsibilities, which I try to perform. But I still, my primary life hasn't changed. And my life is, is around science. Well, he continued to do research, but he spent much of his later life teaching, and as with many great scientists, he branched out into philosophy. I still teach, and I love teaching. The text we are using is Goethe's Faust, as something which, which was written by a great poet. The story, at least of the first part, is a chemist story or an alchemist story. And the second part is that whereas the alchemist couldn't make gold, but Paper money was about invented at the time, and he puts paper money instead of gold, saying that from nothing some value is created. So I enjoy it very much, and I learn more than my students. I think for any scientist it's essential to have contact, free exchange, and, as we said, kicking around ideas. And you do this all the time with your students. I consider the greatest blessing to be a university professor is it keeps you young, your, your students are your wider scientific family. And in this give and take, I hope that I am, I am inspiring them a little. At the same time, uh, they keep me active and going. I think my role as a professor is a catalyst and somebody who tries to provide them a milieu where they can pursue their work and study relatively shielded from what they will later be exposed in the world. Dr. Ola was a very modest man, and here he waxes philosophic on his life. Now, of course, all scientists believe what they are doing is significant, but I am a human being interested in, in science. But I learned one thing very useful. It said that I gladly admit how little I know, that whereas you don't plan that your work has, has practical uses, it's a great pleasure when you can apply some of your, your knowledge to do something which may be useful for the future. Well, I'm going to close on that note. I want to thank my producer and IT genius, Sid Tepps. A little earlier in the cast, you heard Dr. Ola talk about Franz Liszt. Franz Liszt was born in Raiding, which is now part of Austria, but was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire until just before Dr. Ola was born. It's less than 150 miles from Dr. Ola's birthplace in Budapest, less than a two and a half hour drive today. So as a final tribute to Dr. Ola, we'll close with a little bit of Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody. <laughs> Mathematics, I think you must have some born talent. I'm not so sure for chemistry you need to have a born talent. What probably is helpful is that you need to have an inquiring mind.